Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you for a movie review. Today I will be reviewing the 1978 film by the name of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which of course is, I think, the first remake of the classic film from the 50s. I think this movie would go on to be re remade like three times. I want to say that it came out in in the in the 80s or the 90s or something. I think it was the early 90s as Body Snatchers and then there was a horrendous movie made I think in I don't know if it was 90 or, or 2007 with Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig by the name of Invasion which is I saw you know on video at the time and it's just boring as all shit. So um, this movie, my history with this movie doesn't go back incredibly far. I think I saw it probably for the first time. I got this triple feature MGM DVD collection with Alien, Life Force, and this movie on it. Um, and I don't think I'd seen it until until then, you know. So that was probably in, I don't know, the first decade of the 21st century. I got that DVD, you know, triple feature collection thing. And I think I can remember liking it quite a bit back when I saw it, but I don't think I've seen it since then. So I might have just saw it uh, for the second time just recently, having, you know, rewatched it again for the first time probably since, you know, since I originally got the DVD collection. And I gotta tell you, I really, really liked this movie seeing it again. It's it's like a, you know, this movie's from 1978. It's got top name stars at the time, Donald Sutherland, you know, Leonard Nimoy, Jeff Goldblum, of course, is, you know, starting out really young at this time, and Veronica Cartwright a year before she'd end up appearing in Alien, of course, and there's this other chick, I can't remember her name, but she was a star of, uh, one of the stars of the, the movie, the zombie Nazi movie by the name of Shockwaves that came out in 76 or 77 or something like that. So it was interesting, I, I had forgotten that that woman, at least for, you know, this movie, maybe beyond this movie as well, had kind of gone mainstream. It was nice to see her, you know, in an actual mainstream movie with some actual stars like Leonard Nimoy and Donald Sutherland and stuff. She definitely was an attractive actress and stuff like that so when I saw her in this movie I'm like oh cool she's not only in you know B zombie Nazi movies but she's also in this movie which is really cool so the beginning of this movie is really actually cool and being 1978 obviously I mean it's a no-brainer it's pre-CG effects and all practical and real kind of effects or maybe in some cases optical effects a lot of a lot of reverse photography situations going on in the movie for a lot of the kind of pod effects or, you know, whatever, just alien fungi effects, whatever you want to call it, but the very beginning of the movie features what can only be this, you know, I don't know, the, the alien's home world or something like that, or the world they ravished and maybe they're moving on to the next, it's not explained, but it's really, really goofy, and I think they actually recruited some some guys to do this, this alien spore stuff special just for the movie, but it's the only way I can really describe these alien spores in the movie and kind of them like, you know, you know, congregating and doing this and that before like, le you know, lifting off and leaving the surface of the planet is almost like, almost like deformed bubbles or something like that. I'm sure it's something really simple that's in the scene, you know, of like the aliens spores or whatever they are, you know, alien beings gathering and, and lifting off the surface and, and traveling through space, plus past a planet like Jupiter or something and ending up on Earth. But it's just the really the creepy ass stuff. I mean, you can tell watching it, you know it's physical and it's real stuff and most likely, and, and pro pro probably all the shots, probably reverse photography. Reverse is really an, an easy way to make something normal, you know, look just kind of abnormal by, you know, really other, otherworldly or creepy. And as I said, reverse photography is used quite a bit in the, the effects of, you know, not only the alien spore stuff leaving the planet they leave at the beginning of the movie, but also some of the pod effects, you know, the, the, the flowers coming out of the pod, and in fact, you know, just bodies coming out of the pods and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff is done in reverse. But I gotta say, you know, it's really cool and refreshing seeing like 1978 special effects version of, you know, this stuff, we didn't see any of this stuff in the 50s movie, I don't think of, you know, like the alien spores and this and that leaving the planet or whatever to, to go to Earth. So it's kind of cool to see the late 70s version of that and it's really, you know, it's really kind of creepy seeing that stuff on screen, but I think I've said my point about that, but this movie takes place in San Francisco. I can't remember where the, the 50s movie took place. I think it was just like a nondescript 
quiet Californian town or something like that in the original 50s film. Um, this one takes place in, place in San Francisco and one, one of the things I love about the movie is just like the characters are so natural and, and kind of normal and likable and stuff. I think, I want to say Brooke Adams is, I think it's Brooke Adams is the lead woman in this movie and she's got this boyfriend or husband or something like that who's all into sports and kind of sports first and then her. You don't see him very much normal in the movie at all, just kind of the very beginning of the movie when he's more or less normal and just a sports freaking fanatic and they go to bed and this and that and I think on the way home from work at the beginning of the movie what ends up happening is before they introduce the characters you kind of see the stuff go through you know the, the sky you know the clouds and the, the alien stuff ends up coming down in the rain onto plants and stuff and then when it's on leaves it kind of like grows and takes you know takes over a leaf or something like that and becomes this flower on you know on plants so it's basically you know, comes down through the rain, this alien spore stuff, lands on plants and becomes flowers and a lot of people pick the flowers and the, the main character, Brooke Adams, I think is her name. In this movie, the actress that plays this character grabs one of these, you know, goofy looking flowers from a, you know, a, a freaking plant and takes it home on the way home from work or something and, you know, they put it in a glass jar full of water next to the, you know, the bed when they go to bed and it was right next to her husband's aka or slash boyfriend, whatever the hell he is. And then he wakes up and he's goofy, you know, uh, right away. So it really, the movie starts right away with, you know, like people getting possessed and stuff like that. Her boyfriend's the first one who, you know, gets, you know, whatever, you know, in his body invaded or whatever the, you want to say. And right at the beginning of the movie, you see him the next morning, like putting this goofy ass looking almost like just steel wool kind of stuff. And uh, you know, and taking it out in a trash can and putting it in the trash, the back of the you know garbage truck, and it's just like, well, that's probably you know, the r remains of his real you know the real guy's real body and stuff. But I just I just love the way the the, the characters are per portrayed, and I mean I'm not a huge Donald Sutherland fan, but I got to tell you, you know, seeing him in this movie, he's kind of kind of likable, and he's he's a great you know presence in the movie and. I think he's, I don't know if he's Brooke Adams' boss or something in this movie, possibly, but you can tell his character has, you know, a crush on her or something like that, and very early on in the movie when she comes back to that day, she realizes that her, her husband's off, or boyfriend, whatever the hell he is, is very off, and, you know, voices the concern to the Donald Sutherland character, and very early into the movie, you know, she gets, you know, she's starting to share the fact with Donald Sutherland character that, you know, something's not right, and then Donald Sutherland goes to pick up something at dry cleaning or something like that, and the, this guy saying, you know, this guy who's working there is saying his wife isn't, my wife is not my wife, and all this and that, and so it, it very quickly spreads into this thing, and I, I must say the way this movie is done, kind of like the original Amityville Horror, is such a great slow burn just like just a wonderful you know pace for me of course me being a 70s baby and stuff I guess I have a uh, a certain admiration and love for these 70s movies and stuff like that but it's just you know the the, the way things go south is just it's such a nicely slow I mean it, it ha I guess it's really not that slow because it starts happening really soon in the movie but just the you know very much with like Amityville Horror the first movie from the 79 or whatever just the speed in which, you know, stuff starts to go south is just a perfect pace and stuff like that. And throughout the movie, you know, we'll meet Jeff Go I didn't know I can't I didn't remember Jeff Goldblum played such a uh, a prominent character, but he's just great in this movie and seeing him so young and so scrawny is funny. And Veronica Cartwright wasn't very sexy and alien very much because of just the you know, the crew clothes they had her wear, but she's actually kind of sexy back in the 70s. So Veronica Cartwright was pretty cute back then. And I think, I think uh, her and Jeff Goldblum character are married and they own, they, they own and run this like, you know, I don't know, massage parlor slash mud bath parlor. There's this really nasty shot where some fat ass guy gets out of the mud bath and you see his, duh, I don't even want to tell you what you see. <laughs> Hopefully one day I can forget that I saw that, but, um, yeah, that, that that part's nasty, but Jeff Goldblum must be really early in his career when he did this movie, but he is really, really fun in this movie. He's kind of like a, a hippie kind of a guy, I think a poet, you know, obviously he runs the mud bath, you know, thing with his wife or whatever, so he's a really, really fun 
character and uh and then Leonard Nimoy is this like you know kind of big wig psychiatrist psychologist guy and it's it's just you know it's really funny seeing him in movies like this where he's not Spock and he's got round human ears and he's laughing and smiling and stuff uh it's kind of goofy obviously you know obviously me like so many other people know Leonard Nimoy best from this characterization of Spock and stuff so it's fun to see him it's interesting to see him in other roles like this where he's a human, but it's funny because towards the end of the movie he'll end up being more of a Spock-like character, which is kind of funny and interesting and stuff. But this is like just one year before Star Trek The Motion Picture, I think, so that's kind of fun. Just I just love how the movie's, you know, just conceived, executed. I mean, it's just really great on all fronts, like written, like the dialogue, the, the scenario, just what happens in the movie. And just also the the technical aspects of the movie as far as how it's shot and cut and stuff and the music it's you know maybe not necessarily music as much as just you know like the electronic sounds and stuff the music or electronic sounds whatever the hell you want to call it for the kind of the soundtrack of the movie if you will is really creepy in a lot of cases you'll see you know pod people or whatever and you just be this like just you know just foreboding like wow wow well, I can't remember exactly how the, the, the sounds went, but it's kind of, you know, he, the, the, there was one cue that almost sounded exactly like a cue from the movie uh, Shockwaves that Brooke Adams had been in formerly. So the, the, the music is really kind of creepy. And I will say for being, you know, over 40 years old, this movie, and I think it's rated PG because it's before PG-13 existed, this movie is actually kind of creeps you out the way it, the way it, just unfolds and works and, and everything like that and oh I almost forgot god I didn't want to forget to mention this there's this really fun cameo from the star you know the guy who was the star in um, the original movie from the 50s he'd go on to be in a lot of Joe Dante movies in the late 70s and early 80s and stuff inner space howling and piranha and stuff I can't remember his name right now but the you know the guy the main star guy from the first film from the 50s does a cameo as the character that he plays kind of at the end of the movie of the 50s they're here you know lock up your daughters i don't think he says that but you know it's kind of like that they're here they're gonna take us over it's really really cool i forgot that he did that cameo in this movie and being the late 70s he, he's still relatively young and stuff like that and it was a really fun idea to put him in the movie as a as a cameo doing that and then he just like gets hit by a car like moments later and he, he unfortunately he doesn't last in the movie very long but i think it was just long enough to have like a wink to the you know the, the fans of the the 50s movie and stuff that was really fun fun detail yeah really really well done movie like writing and just cinematography editing music and just really just you know it was just really fun to just see this movie from the late 70s and and not see anyone on their cell phones and not see any computer generated effects and just analog movie, you know, freaking. There's this funny, there's this funny bit where they, it's almost like they, it was a commercial for this phone. The, the character of Brooke Adams and, you know, her boyfriend and husband, whatever their hell he is, in their apartment, they have like this goofy ass, probably at the time it was probably high tech, but like their phone built into the wall or something where like, the, either the, I think the, I can't remember if it was push buttons or the rotary thing was on the phone and then the hook is on the wall and you, you pull the phone off the wall and then the cord will come out of this hole and they even showcase it in a special shot and when she puts the phone back on the wall, you know, it, it shows that the, the, the cord will then be, you know, like sucked back into the hole like, you know, it's kind of like the, the high tech 70s phone, get yours today and it was just like so lame but cool at the same time so the only my only complaint with this movie is that i'm not too too keen on like the end of the movie where the donald sutherland character without spoiling too much of it i'll i'll just say that he he kind of he kind of ruins some of the pods or you know does you know where they where they have their main pod production area or something like that towards the end of the movie he kind of goes and destroys a lot of the pods i'm, I'm not that's my only gripe about this movie is i do feel like it it, it might be 50, 10 or 15 minutes too long and I'm I could have done without that scene but you know at the end of the day it's kind of the era of spectacle like you know the 70s is the the disaster movie era decade and stuff so it kind of probably felt like they had to have some spectacle in this movie and you know seeing him burn this this big warehouse I guess I'm revealing a lot of it more than I intended but having them burn this big warehouse full of the pod production facility is just kind of like spectacle 
honestly, I could have done without it if I did a Nate cut. I'd probably just cut that out or whatever. This movie really doesn't, you know, this movie works on this subtle level and I don't feel like it needs to, you know, have any spectacle in this movie. I think it, the spectacle scene was kind of out of place in my opinion and like I said, made the movie 15, 10 to 15 minutes longer than it needed to be. One thing I won't ruin about the end of the movie, of course, is it, there's kind of a twist on what happens in the original 50s movie, um, you know, compared to the original 50s movie, a little bit of a twist on what happens at the very end of the movie. I won't spoil that, but I, when, when I rewatched it, you know, just recently, I, I hadn't, I didn't remember how it ended, you know, as far as like the very, very end, and as, as it was happening, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, that's just kind of a sad, ending and stuff like that and that's another thing I like about this movie you know I, I'm really not the biggest fan of like happy endings or at least not I won't say I don't like any happy endings but I don't like happy endings all the time you know and I think the invasion of the body snatchers movie is definitely kind of a story that really shouldn't have a happy ending and I think didn't they like tack on some like half-ass happy ending at the end of the 50s movies too or something like that so um that definitely, you know, the ending is really kind of sad, but I think it's the ending that is, you know, should be at the, at the end of this movie. So my starage, unfortunately, I, you know, I would go four stars for this movie, but I'm just not a fan of that, like, that spectacle moment towards the end of the movie where Donald Sutherland, you know, blows up all these pods and stuff. So I, I, I still will be able to go three and three quarter stars out of four stars for the 1978 version of Invasion of the body snatchers highly 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 recommended if you like you know more um slow moving movies from the 70s and stuff like that and it's just analog era and no cgi and stuff and you haven't seen this one yet and you know somehow you haven't seen this yet and you're a fan of some of the other remakes or the original film you gotta you owe it to yourself to really check out this movie and in my opinion it's it's really 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 a well done movie and probably a really a <clears throat> you know, a really well done movie for the time. So I guess that'll pretty much do it from our, for my review. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to see. Okay.